I want to go now and take a look at when does a day start. So I'm going to give you some scriptures now which prove that according to the Bible, the day starts at sunset. Okay? So if you go to Genesis chapter 1, and we'll start there. I'm going to read the first five verses in Genesis chapter 1. And you'll see exactly what the situation is. Verse 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening. And there was morning the first day. So, when God created the earth in the beginning, the first thing that was over the earth was darkness. And around the middle of the first day, God said, let there be light. The reason why I say around the middle of the first day is because in John 11 verse 9, Jesus said there were 12 hours in the day, which indicates 12 hours of darkness, 12 hours of light. So therefore, there's your first scripture. As it was in the beginning, so it is now. The day began with darkness and ended with light. If you go to Exodus chapter 12 now. Exodus chapter 12 verse 6. This scripture is all about the Passover. This was the first time that the Passover was ever kept, and it was to do with the people coming out of Egypt and keeping the Passover on the 14th day of Nisan, which was called Abib in those days. The days, the, the, day, the names of the months changed when they went into Babylon. Verse 6, it says, talking about the Passover lamb, you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation shall kill it between the evenings. I'm giving you a literal Greek, sorry, a literal Hebrew translation there. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. That was verse 8, by the way. I'm going to jump to verse 18 now. The first month, on the 14th day of the month, at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month in the evening. So, when does this day start? It starts basically at sunset. It says they shall kill it between the evenings. I'll explain that at another time. But in verse 18, it says, In the evening you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month in the evening. So when is the evening time? The evening time takes a bit of explaining because um, there is more than one evening time in a day. But I'll do that in another teaching. But this was clearly the beginning of the day, after sunset, when they uh, came and they were expected to eat it. And there are other scriptures which prove that um, it has to be killed in the evening. And I'll give you the references, and you can look them up at your pleasure. Deuteronomy 16.4, Joshua 5.10, Numbers 9, verse 3 and verse 5, 
they all tell you the same thing and they are not the only ones it had to be killed before midnight if you read Exodus 11.4 it says then Moses said thus says the Lord about midnight I will go out into the midst of Egypt this was the angels of the Lord going out into the midst of Egypt to kill all the firstborn in Egypt if the blood of the lamb was not on the doorpost at that time then they Israelites would have lost some of their children as well so it's obvious from this scripture that it had to be killed before midnight so if you turn to Exodus 12 verse 29 it says it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the livestock so the Passover lamb had to be killed before that time if it wasn't killed before that time they couldn't put the blood on the doorpost and their children would have been killed as well I'm going to read now from 2nd Chronicles chapter 35 and I'll read you verse 11 to 14 verse 11 says they killed the Passover and the priests sprinkled the blood from their hands and the Levites flayed him and they removed the burnt offerings that they might give according to the divisions of the families of the people to offer to Yahweh as it is written in the book of Moses and so they did as with the oxen and they roasted the Passover with fire according to the ordinance but the other holy offerings they boiled in pots and cauldrons and in pans and divided them speedily among the people verse 14 this is the important one after they made ready for themselves and for the priests because the priests and the sons of Aaron were busied in offering of burnt offerings and fat until night um, but until night that indicates there is a period of time between sunset and night time and that time is called in the next thing you need to know is that it had to be eaten before morning and the scriptures that you can check for this are Exodus 12 verse 8 Exodus 12 verse 10 Exodus 34 verse 35 Numbers 9 12 and Deuteronomy 16 verse 4 all those scriptures tell you that it had to be eaten before morning so if these had to be eaten before morning it shows you they must have been killed and eaten before morning this is the first part of the day when you look at the new testament you'll find out jesus did the same thing didn't he? look at leviticus 23 and i'll give you another scripture there to prove to you when the day starts and finishes so go to Leviticus 23 verse 27 and you will find it says this also on the tenth day of the seventh month there shall be a day of atonement it shall be a holy convocation to you you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire to the Lord and you shall do no work in that same day for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God this is the important verse now verse 23 sorry verse 32 it shall be to you a sabbath of rest you shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at evening from evening until evening you shall celebrate your sabbath now that last phrase from evening until evening is from the sunset time the evening which starts at the first part of the day until evening which is the last part of the day you'll find there are two evenings in the day if you didn't know and that tells you when it was so if this if this particular day was a feast day it was the day of atonement 
and it went from evening until evening. Well, if that day goes from evening to evening, where do the other days go from? They're not going to be any different, are they? They're all going to go from evening to evening, basically, from sunset to sunset. Uh, the next scripture is uh, Nehemiah chapter 13, and I'm going to start reading from verse 15. It says, In those days I saw Judah, some people treading wine presses on the Sabbath, and bringing in sheaves and loading donkeys, with wine, grapes, figs, and all kinds of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I warned them about the, the day on which they were selling provisions. Men of Tyre came and dwelt there also, who brought in fish and all kinds of goods, and sold them on the Sabbath day to the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. And I contended with the nobles of Judah and said to them, What evil thing is this that you do, by which you profane the Sabbath day? Did you not your fathers do this? And did not our God bring all this disaster on us and on this city? Yet you bring added wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. So it was at the gates of Jerusalem, as it began to be dark before the Sabbath, that I commanded the gates to be shut and charged those who, that it must not be opened until after the Sabbath. Then I posted some of my servants at the gates so that no burdens would be brought in on the Sabbath day. Now then, that last verse there, verse 19, the gates of Jerusalem, as it began to be dark, it says, what time is that? That's the evening of the day before the Sabbath. It began to be dark. Uh, it says, He commanded the gates to be shut and charged them that they must not be opened until after the Sabbath. So that tells you when the Sabbath day started again. Now uh, the Sabbath day started just as it began to be dark, just after that. Uh, so this would be the evening of the day before. And there's another scripture which proves that the day starts at sunset. I'll give you one last scripture to prove this point. And this has got to be the best one of the lot because it's so concrete you just can't escape it. And it's in the New Testament. Go to John 20 verse 1. John 20 verse 1 reads, on the first day of the week comes Mary Magdalene early, when it was still yet dark, to the tomb and sees the stone taken away from the tomb. So this was on the first day of the week. And this was early morning, and this was while it was still dark. So this was just coming to the end of the night time. Verse 19 of the same chapter, it says, the same day at evening being the first day of the week. When the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and says to them, Peace be to you. So when Mary Magdalene came to the tomb in the dark, it was the first day of the week. And when Jesus appeared to his disciples in the evening of that day, it was still the first day of the week. So, what more proof do you need? That again proves the day starts basically sunset time when um, the evening starts at the beginning and then goes through and then when Mary Magdalene came to the tomb in the morning it was still the first day of the week and when uh, Jesus taught his disciples on the Emmaus Road it was still the first day of the week. They went back to tell them, and when they came to the other apostles and the, and the disciples there, uh, Jesus appeared to them, and it was still the first day of the week. That tells me darkness comes before light. And that's your scriptures to prove that um, a day starts at sunset, not sunrise. So I trust you've been blessed, and if you have, give God the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Click center to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click top right to see more videos. 
and go to our website to see great Bible studies, Hebrew and Greek word studies, and lots more. God bless you.